Hi guys and welcome back to another Procreate tutorial. Today we're gonna be using the updated Procreate version which is Procreate 5 and also today I decided to challenge myself a little bit for your guys' sake and I'm gonna be using only the default brushes that Procreate 5 comes with so you won't feel the need to pay for any other brushes or download them from some other sources because you'll be able to create a drawing just with the default ones. So I really hope that this little upgrade will help you guys out. And the last thing that makes this tutorial a little bit more special is the fact that today I'm finally gonna be using and trying out the paper-like screen protector. Paper-like is a very thin screen protector that makes your iPad display resemble the texture of an actual sheet of paper. It has a very nice texture and grip to it, which makes the drawing process much more easy and enjoyable. Recently, Paper-like 2.0 has been released and it's gotten even better with its level of transparency and higher resistance for drawing. And even though I just started using my paper like a couple of weeks ago, I'm totally in love with it at this point. It feels a little bit different at the beginning, but once you get used to it, it feels really awesome and you're gonna probably think, how could you even live without it? So well, you can order paper like through my affiliate link in my description box. There is no extra cost for you, but there is a small percentage of sales going to me. So if you feel like supporting me in that way, I would be very thankful. Every paper like set comes with two paper likes and some application accessories, which are in fact very helpful while applying your paper like for the first time. And they also ship worldwide, so that's pretty awesome. And also huge thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring my today's video. So I'm starting off pretty usual because first things first I'm gonna do my initial sketch and today also I'm gonna be using a reference picture, the one that just popped up on the screen, so it will be a little bit easier for me because I won't need to spend super much time on thinking of an idea for an illustration because I'm just gonna use her pose as today's reference and I'll probably get some inspiration from this picture while doing my today's illustration. And now coming back to what's happening on the screen. So I'm using the Derwent pencil from the default brushes. It's uh, under the sketching brushes, I think. And I enjoy this brush very much because it gives you this kind of texture, but it's still soft and it feels good as an outline. So I really liked it, honestly. So I'm using this brush to do my initial sketch. And at this point, I'm just trying to transfer the proportions from the picture onto my canvas in Procreate. And I'm just trying to lay down every element of the drawing, but I'm not minding the details. I'm just trying to make everything look good and proportionate at this point. So once I'm pretty happy with what my initial sketch looks like, I'm gonna move on to adding some outline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the opacity of the initial sketch layer down to like a 50% or basically something that works for you where the initial sketch layer is not as visible but it's still visible enough so you can kind of trace onto it. And then I'm just gonna add a new empty layer above that initial sketch layer and I'm taking exact same Derwent pencil but I'm taking black color and I'm just trying to refine the lines of the initial sketch and just trying to make them more clean and polished. But I'm still not gonna spend super much time on this outline because I'm still planning to do another more refined outline. So this one is just gonna be my kind of base for further elements in the drawing, if that makes sense. And now my favorite part to do, and quite crucial when it comes to how I do my illustrations, so first tool that I love to use is the liquify tool. It basically gives you the opportunity to move around your drawing like with some kind of magic wand so you can kind of swipe your drawing around until it looks good. And it's very intuitive tool so I bet you guys will know how to use it right away. I really suck at explaining those kind of things but I think you can clearly see what I'm doing with this tool on the screen right now. So yeah, I'm kind of moving around my sketch layer until it looks good for me. 
And then another great thing that I do every time I do digital drawings is the flip horizontally tool. And once you actually flip your drawing, you can see all the flaws that it has. You know, sometimes your drawing can look really good and you're super happy and proud of it, but then you flip it horizontally, even by accident, and then you actually get to see that it doesn't look that good. And it happens to me a lot of times, and that's why I love doing digital art, because digital art allows me to do those kind of things, to check my mistakes and fix them before I proceed any further. So I really advise you guys to use the flip horizontally method, because only then you can actually detect all of your mistakes that you've done and fix them before it's too late. So yeah, I'm just, you know, fixing a couple of details here and there until it looks good in uh, both directions, let's say. And once I'm done with this step, like I said, I like to be a little bit extra of my outline, so I'm gonna lower the opacity down of this sketch layer that I just did, and I'm just gonna create another empty layer on top of it, and I'm gonna sketch this exact same thing, but a little bit more refined and polished, to make my outline even more clean. So now that my outline is completely done, I'm gonna finally move on to coloring. And here I also updated my techniques of how I color my art, and they really make the process easier and more comfortable for me. So first things first, I'm always coloring in the skin. So here I'm gonna color in her face and her hand because that's the only visible points of the skin and I'm just gonna layer a flat color on it. And here, before I go in with any shading, I'm just gonna make sure that I have the exact shape of my skin parts and I'm gonna erase any excessive details and lines in the points where I probably got out of the line, so I just want the exact shape of the skin. And then what I'm doing is I'm going into the skin layer and I'm choosing the option Alpha Lock. This is gonna kind of lock your layer in the shape that you just colored and it will allow you to shade this shape without going out of the lines, if that makes sense. It makes the coloring process way quicker because you don't need to worry about erasing anything if you go out of the lines and well, I really really love to use it. So I'm taking like one or two tones darker color than her actual skin color and I'm placing it in the areas that I know will be shaded. Here you can obviously look at the reference picture and just kind of copy the places where the shadows are gonna be, but I always like to improvise on that a little bit and try to do those shadows a little bit more my way. And at this point I'm not gonna go hardcore with shading, I'm just keeping it quite lightly because I want to add more layers on top of it. And when it comes to the brush here I'm using medium hard airbrush, it's also one of my favorite brushes for coloring and it's also a default brush. So once I have my base shading, I'm just gonna smudge it around a little bit, but I'm trying to not use as much of the smudge tool as I did in the past, because it just looks too airbrushed. I would like to give my drawings a little bit more texture, so I'm experimenting in that field. Okay, and now since I still want to add a little bit more of shading and highlighting to the face, I'm gonna be using another trick that I started to use recently and I totally love it, and it's called the clipping mask. So I'm gonna create a new layer above my skin color layer and I'm gonna click the clipping mask option on it. And what it basically does, it's a little bit like the alpha lock option, but it just allows you to create new layers on top of your base layer, let's say. It's really easy once you try it out. So like I said, I'm gonna add probably a couple of more layers with uh, more shading and highlighting to make the face look a little bit more three-dimensional. And 
And then, once I'm happy with what the skin looks like, I'm gonna proceed to adding the details. And usually I'm starting off with coloring in the eyes because I feel like they really complete the face, obviously. And then I'm just doing other details. So here the order in which you're gonna color in the rest of the face details, it's obviously up to you. I'm usually starting with the eyes and then I'm doing the rest. And after I'm done with the face details, I like to proceed on with the hairstyle. Since it takes up a lot of the space in my today's illustration, I want to have it laid out before I go in with any more details and refinement. So for the hair I'm using the same method that I was using for coloring in the face, so I'm gonna lay out the first base layer of color. And here, firstly, I was thinking that I'm gonna go with blue, slightly minty color, but then later on I actually changed my mind, which you're gonna see later on in the video, but let's not talk about it right now. So like I said, for the hair it's same procedure like for the skin. First the base color, and then I'm alpha locking it, and I'm putting the first shadows on it to have this kind of base for details and when you're coloring in the hair it's really important that you follow their natural shape I have a tutorial on how to draw hair so you can see that to to get a better grasp and see in detail how the hair is usually constructed and how it works but if there was one tip that I would like to give you is try to make the hair as natural and as flowy as possible and just mimic the shapes that they would usually be in in reality and then at the very end of the process of coloring in the hair I always like to add a couple of strands of hair here and there to give this whole hairstyle even more natural look and a three-dimensional effect this is this extra something that really takes your drawing to another level. When it comes to coloring in the cap, I also use the same method, alpha look and then clipping masks. It was really easy to do it because this cap was really not anything that demanding as coloring in the skin and hair, for example, so it was pretty easy to do it. And then as those last final touches to my piece, I always like to add those little extra details, like some pop of highlights on her lips to make them look juicy and glossy and just three-dimensional again. I'm usually also adding a little bit of an extra highlight on her face to make it pop even more. And just, you know, you can play around with jewelry, you can play around with some little accessories to just spice up your piece and make it even more original. That would be pretty much all for my today's illustration. Once more, it's all done with the default brushes that Procreate 5 comes with, so I really hope that it will be much easier for you to follow along and try it out yourself, of course, if you have Procreate. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed my today's video, and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to always be up to date with my videos. And well, once more, thank you so, so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I love you all and I can't wait to see you in my next videos. Take care. Bye. I'm just going with the gut. Never had a doubt. Felt like this is just a must. For me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now.